morning, everyone. Good to see you out there, and welcome to the 2018 edition of Digital Bonds S4. Let me uh, start out with some statistics. So this is actually the largest S4 we've ever had. We've got 443 of you, a good TCP number, from 24 different countries, and a hat tip to Japan. They have the largest non-US contingent here, but we're really happy all of you are here and, and are going to spend three days. I think it's probably one of the largest gatherings of this kind of talent the world has ever seen. And we've got a lot for you to do. We've got three days, 64 sessions on three different stages, plus the unsolicited response on Thursday. So a lot of content for you to hear in sessions like this. But then besides that, there's other activities going on. So as we speak, there is something going on called the ICS Detection Challenge. So we have Clarity, Gravwell, Nozomi, and Security Matters actually testing their products against each other. Today, they're, this morning, they're doing the asset identification part of the competition. What we were able to do was we got actual packet captures from a midstream oil and gas company. And this included their, their pipeline SCADA, their terminals that had DCS and PLC. So we got the real packet captures, we anonymized them, and today what those contestants are doing is seeing who does the best job of identifying the assets in quantity and detail. And this afternoon on the main stage, you'll hear the results. And then on Thursday is the detection portion. So there we've introduced some attacks into the packets, and we'll see who's the best at detecting attacks and award an overall winner. So that, that's happening right now. Uh, we've got the ICS Capture the Flag is back again this year. Uh, Reed Whiteman does a great job with that. He has it all set up again this year. If you've been here before, we've moved the location of the CTF. It is now right next to the entrance to stage two. So we've got some teams competing very seriously. I know the Booz Allen team is quite confident that they're going to do well again this year, but we have some other teams that are going to challenge them. You can play a lot or a little, or even if you're not going to play, I'd encourage you to stop by there because there's some really interesting things to see. And again, that's right by the stage two entrance. And then the other thing going on in the venue is if you were here last year, we had something where we trained 15 high school students from Palm Beach County, uh, gave them a three-day intense ICS and ICS security training using the Sabati module. Uh, this year, we're trying to step it up a little bit. So we actually have 13 high school teachers from Palm Beach County schools who are up there getting trained with the concept that in the fall semester, they will actually have a multi-week module training students on what ICS are, how they work, and how to secure them. So you'll see a lot of teachers going around, and I'd encourage you to talk to them and, and let them know a little bit about the industry. So there are a lot of activities going on here at the event today, uh, but we also have social events. We've got the welcome party tonight, the cabana sessions on Wednesday, tomorrow, and then the craft beer bash on Thursday. Because I'm sure you have attended other events, one of the main things about an event is getting to know your fellow attendees, uh, reestablishing or, or creating new relationships. And we want to set up an environment and time for you to do that. So those are very important. And I think you'll find that we do things a little different here. They're, they're quite unique, fun events. So that's what we have in store for you over the next three days. Sometimes we have a theme for the event, and this year we do have a theme for S4, and I like one-word themes. Uh, this year, if you've seen it on your lanyard, it's try with an exclamation mark and a question mark. Now, if we had sent those lanyards to be made maybe three days later, we might have substituted that Y <laughs> for an I, because as you know, we had... Uh, Triton and Trisys, and I, I just started calling it Tri dot 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 because there were so many different names. But it's a good thing that we didn't do that because the folks who gave us that great acronym ICSJWG, 
the DHS, NCC, IC, ICS, CERT, <laughs> decided to call it Hatman. So uh, it's a good thing we didn't switch. So what do we mean about try? I know this audience. You know, I, I know a lot of you out there. I'm going to meet the rest of you. But 30 percent, well, maybe not 30, maybe 38 percent of you are thinking of the Yoda quote when I said try. But really, the only reason I put that picture up there is I take every opportunity I can to show the Death Star fire pit. <laughs> because that's going to be at the welcome party. And I haven't even seen it yet. I've just seen the pictures, and I'm really looking forward to see that. But with all due respect to Yoda, I think he's a little bit wrong in this case. Because you are going to not be able to do anything if you don't try. And this would seem to be obvious but actually, in the ICS community, we have a history of not trying when it comes to security. We went almost an entire decade from September 11th for the next 10 years without trying to solve the actual problem of securing these systems. I'm not saying we didn't do anything. We uh, put firewalls between corporate networks and the ICS. We deployed antivirus. We had backup and recovery capabilities. So we helped restrict who could get to them. But solving the fundamental problem that these things had no authentication or integrity was something that we made almost no progress on 10 years. So the people like myself, after 10 years, were embarrassed that we hadn't made any progress and didn't want to see that happen again. We had a small number of people. I literally, the first 10 years, I can't think of anyone who actually was trying to solve the problem in a three to five year time span. That started to change in 2012, 2014, but it was still a tiny percentage. 3% is probably generous. And Stuxnet certainly helped raise awareness that this was seriously an issue, not just a pipe dream. But then we actually saw some progress the last three years. And there's a cause to be optimistic. We're still not at over 50% of the people thinking we can do it and need to do it, but we've got a solid 10%. We're seeing executives care about this problem. Uh, you'll see at S4, you'll see examples of SDLs in place by vendors for five plus years, secure PLCs and other level one devices, secure protocols. This is all happening now. So it's finally happening that we're doing this. And in a sense, we could declare victory, right? We have solved the problem. We are now going to have systems that can be secured. And I do think we should celebrate our successes. You, you know, we worked hard. We are making progress. We should celebrate that. But what scares me a little bit is I'm hearing a lot of new topics with almost the same throwing in the towel, this will never work, we're doomed, it's always going to be insecure, not trying approach. The one, that, uh, the one that bothers me the most is that second bullet up there. We're getting these new secure protocols, uh, systems with signed firmware, all these great security features, and when you talk to people and say, asset owners with a potential high consequence event if compromised, should consider upgrading to these or accelerating their replacement. And when you tell people that, uh, I'm getting a not trying response. I'm getting people saying, oh, no, that'll never happen. No, no, that's too much money, that'll never happen. Same thing with IIoT or IoT. There's a, a feeling like we've already lost that. You know, th there's nothing we can do on that. So what I'm asking you to do is while you're here, approach this as if we can actually solve these problems. Okay, you, we've got a lot of smart people here, a lot of experience here. I want you to come at these next three days like we can solve these problems. They're not impossible. They're not something that we're going to have to wait for 10 or 15 years or until some catastrophic event happens, but that we can actually solve them. And who knows, you know, if, if you do this, you might like the way that feels, and after three days, you're free to continue feeling that way. But at least while you're here for the next three days, I'm going to encourage you 
to believe that we should try and we can solve these problems. Which leaves us to the question mark. And what I mean by this is, while you're here, you need to be open to new information and new ideas. Okay, because we know that ICS moves very slowly. It's like a glacier. But it does move. But when you're in a market that moves very slowly, the temptation is, whenever anyone is presenting you with something different, to say that won't work because we so rarely see change in our industry. And I would challenge you to look at how you're doing what you do now and what you think now and compare that to what you were doing and thinking 10 years ago, five years ago, or even three years ago. If it's the same, if you're saying the same things and doing the same things, I would encourage you that you need to be open to new ideas and information. And certainly while you're here, you should do that. And I can tell you from my personal experience that S4 has changed how we approach a lot, how I personally approach a lot, how our business approaches a lot. And I'll just give you one quick example. Um, through the presentations you see up there and others here at S4, we have really focused a lot more on consequence reduction. We've been doing assessments of asset owner systems since 2000, so we're in our 18th year of doing that. And I'm sure a lot of you have done assessments. Uh, you end up with this really long list of things that need to be done, especially if it's a new system that doesn't have a ICS security program. And what we would always do is we'd create a priority based on efficient risk reduction. We'd say, what should they do next with the next dollar they're going to spend or the next hour they're going to spend to reduce the risk? And say, OK, do this first, this second, this third. But the way we were doing it was really focused on security controls, which, which is something to consider. But that's the likelihood side of the risk equation we were very rarely looking at the consequence side of the risk equation. And because I was hearing these really vivid examples and approaches from some of the speakers you see there and others at S4, we have completely changed the way we work with asset owners now. So it has changed our assessment methodology. And when you look at our prioritized list now, you see a lot more consequence reduction than you did before. And so that's just one way. And I think if you listen here, it might not be a big thing. It might be a number of small things. But if you keep an open mind, I believe it will change the way you do your business, whatever your role is in the ICS security community. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about the S4 program. We want to bring you new information and ideas. We want to challenge you and make you think. So in some cases, this is obvious. Uh, for example, we have some debates where we have two people, one on each side, arguing with each other. For example, we have, should you have an enterprise secure operations center or an OT-specific secure operations center? So we have debates. We also bring in a lot of related field talks, specifically on the main stage, because there's a tendency, you know, you're in this ICS tunnel, and you're, you're pulling in all this information from the same people, uh, with the same background, and we want to bring in people outside of your vision, and you see some of the topics there that will be covered. So you'll see a lot of those on the main stage, and hopefully those will spur some ideas. And then the last thing is we try to bring in people with differing points of view. We try to bring people in with things that challenge the conventional wisdom. And I will tell you, that there are three sessions that I just think are completely wrong. I violently disagree with what the speaker is going to say. And they are, no, I'm not going to tell you what they are. You'll have to guess. <laughs> but you might say, well, wait a minute. Why would you put someone on stage when you think they're dead wrong? And it's because the person that's coming on stage is making an excellent case for that point of view. And I think we should all listen to things that maybe we don't think are right, and, and maybe they'll change our mind. Maybe we'll still think they're wrong at the end of it. But we're going to really challenge you with different points of view and different topics. 
Um, and, I, and I hope you all come here with an open mind. So that's, that's, that's the theme this year is try. I want you to spend the next three days with the belief that we can actually solve this problem, okay, and work on solutions and talk to your peers and listen to sessions with an open mind and, and really listen to the new ideas and hopefully we can make some progress here and hopefully you can take something back with you at the end of it beyond just a, a great time here in Miami Beach. So once again, I want to welcome you to S4, the 2018 edition, and I look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Thanks a lot.